welcome to British Biomedicine Institute. Today, I, Dr. Pramod Khatri, is going to represent a simple topic named as cohort study design. So basically, here we compare the incidence of developing a disease like the risk versus the outcome. So if uh, we can also uh, want to know or we also want to calculate the difference between exposed versus unexposed. Like the exposed are the factors which we study under a clinical trial versus unexposed these uh, without factors under the study. So selection of, of study population will be based upon the community which has been used like sample of residents of a geographic region or there, if there is a special exposure group like occupational group population or we can also use motiv uh, motivated identifiable groups like our doctors and our physicians or nurses. We have to exclude those not at the risk of the disease like those who already have the disease or those who cannot get the disease. There has to be an ascertainment of the exposures like for the main exposure of interest and if there is an other potential co-founding factors. In order to get an ascertainment of a disease, we have to record the vital signs, uh, vital records like your, the death of death certificate of a patient or hospital or medical record or disease registries. There has to be a follow-up of questionnaires or exam of the patient. Ideally, those collecting outcome data should be blind to subject exposure status. So, basically cohort is a group of substance which will be investigated, which will be studied and none of them have the disease and they differ from their exposure status. So if it is exposed, it means the, in the incidence of the disease in the exposed group. There will be an incidence of disease in the exposed group. Whereas un unexposed, the, there will be an incidence of disease in the unexposed group. So under prospective cohort studies, basically we have to select the cohort without a disease. We have to identify those with or without the disease like exposed versus non-exposed or we have to do a follow-up over the time and we have to determine the disease incidence in both either exposed or non-exposed patient group. So under retrospective cohort studies, basically the cohort are assembled retrospectively over the years, past years. And exposure data is determined retrospectively and outcome is also determined currently. So under the analysis of the cohort studies, basically we calculate the risk or incidence in exposed group. We also calculate the incidence in non-exposed group and we also calculate the relative risk between the incidence of exposed versus non-exposed patients. So under the relative risk, if the relative risk is greater than 1%. It indicates the factor increase the risk of developing the disease. The risk of developing leukemia was approximately twice than those with unexposed workers. And if the relative risk is less than 1%, it indicates the factor decrease the risk of developing the disease. And if the relative risk is equal to 1%, it indicates the factor have no effect. So there can also be bias in the cohort studies and basically bias is a systematic error in the study that distort the result and the limit the validity of our conclusion. So there are various co-founding factors like we need to control in, uh, we need to control, control for in analysis like adjustment stratum specific results or there has to be uh, control over the ascertainment bias if it is not blind, blinded. And there has to be exposure status in retrospective studies subjects in order to prevent any type of bias. So the main advantage of the cohort study is that they give a direct estimate of RR, relative risk from the exposure. Second point, we can calculate the incidence rate in exposed and non-exposed patients. We can calculate absolute difference between the incidence rate like uh, these are the attributable risk or we can also calculate the ratio of these rates like we can say RR relative risk. We can uh, correlate a specific exposure with a disease like the, there is a temporal relationship between cause and the effect. 
frequently we can examine those response relationship and we can efficiently uh, basically it is efficient for rare studies exposure and we can also provide information on multiple outcome or a disease from a exposure and the main disadvantage of the cohort studies are that they are large expensive long term studies and there is a problem with loss to follow up which can result in bias and subject can change their exposure over time like uh, smoking or exposure or hormone use etc and it is not sufficient or efficient for rare disease data and there can be a change in diagnostic methods which may bias the determination of outcome like surveillance bias so i hope you have gained a lot of clinical information through this presentation please like share subscribe our youtube channel named as british biomedicine institute good luck goodbye